I invite you to take your Bibles today and turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. We are beginning our study today on this great uh, letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. And uh, many believe, as I do, that this is the last letter that the Apostle Paul wrote uh, while he was alive on this earth. It was likely written in about 66 AD. And as this letter was written, the Apostle Paul knew that the martyr's death was soon to be his lot. And as we come into this particular book of the Bible, we see that he had a strong desire to see Timothy once again. Let me give you a few verses that indicate that. In 2 Timothy 1 and in verse 4, he says, Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. So there we see that he tells Timothy that he was greatly desiring to see him. Then in 2 Timothy 4 and in verse 9, it says, Do thy diligence to come unto me shortly. Verse 11 of 2 Timothy 4, Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Then in verse 21, Do thy diligence to come before winter. So as we come into these passages, we see very clearly that Paul had a great desire to see Timothy once again before he was to die. He had some things that were given to him of the Lord that he desired to pass on to Timothy. We're going to see in 2 Timothy 2.2 2, that Paul says, The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Timothy had proven himself to be a faithful man. Man And Paul was imparting what he knew to Timothy, and there were some other things that he wanted to impart to him before his death. And as we look at this letter, we know that it's a letter to Timothy by Paul, but at the same time we understand that this is a divinely inspired letter. It is a letter that has come to us by God. Through, through Paul. And the underlying thought is a prophesied apostasy and what the believer should do about it. And we will see that as we come into 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 4. Now, with that in mind this morning, let's read the, or today, let's read the introductory comments that Paul gives to Timothy here in this passage. So 2 Timothy 1, beginning to read in verse 1, and I want to read down through to verse 5. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve for my forefathers, with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy." When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. So there's a couple of things in these introductory verses that we see today. First of all, there's a salutation in verses 1 and 2. Keep in mind in Bible times and in these letters that are in the New Testament that these letters were begun by the person signing the letter and addressing who the letter is from. Today we do that at the end, but that was rather convenient in Bible days because at the very beginning you knew who it was that the letter was from. So we see the salutation here in verse 1. And Paul tells us a number of things in verses 1 and 2. First of all, we see the source of Paul's apostleship here. Paul was not a man that was mama called and papa sent. He was not a man that, that just simply people said, I think you should be an apostle or I think you should be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul was a man that was called by God to the mission that God had given him to. And that is so very important because quite honestly, there are some days when the only thing that will keep the pastor going, the only thing that will keep the evangelist going, the only thing that will keep the missionary going is knowing that God has called them. That they haven't been called by men, but they've been called by God. And it says here in verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Paul knew, even though he was in a prison, and even though he was going to die soon, Paul knew that he was in the will of God. He knew that he was doing what it was that God wanted him to do. And that's what motivated Paul to do and to continue to be faithful, even in the face of adverse conditions. 
And friends, it does us well to be at the place in our lives that we know that we're doing what it is that God has called us to do. He was an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And then we see the purpose of his apostleship also in verse 1, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. Paul was living the life that God had for him. He was experiencing that abundant Christian life because every single day Paul understood the importance of dying to himself so that he could live for God, that he could live for what God wanted, and that he could do the will of God in his life. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, I die daily. He said in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, the purpose of his apostleship was it was according to the purpose of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Friends, not only that he would experience the life that God had for him, but also that he would be he would be able to tell others of the eternal life that is available through Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John 17, 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Then we also see in this salutation his relationship to Timothy. It says, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son. You know, that's stronger than the words that he gave to Timothy in second first Timothy chapter one in the greeting and in verse two he says unto Timothy my own son in the faith here he says my dearly beloved son Timothy was a man who meant a tremendous amount to the apostle Paul and then we see the bestowal of this divine blessing not only is he a dearly beloved son but he says here also grace mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Many times in the writing of the Apostle Paul, you will notice that he addresses church and he, churches and he says to them, grace and peace. But yet we also notice that when he writes pastors, that many times, all the time actually, he says grace, mercy, and peace in his greetings. Oh friends, how pastors need mercy. They not only need to understand that they themselves have experienced the mercy of God and continue to experience the mercy of God, but they need the mercy of God as they minister to other people, as they serve other people, and as they faithfully minister amongst those who sometimes even treat them in a wrong way. Notice how he uses the idea of mercy. In 1 Timothy 1 and in verse 2, on the Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace. From God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, pastors need to be merciful people. The Bible says in Matthew 5, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. In 2 Timothy 1 and in verse 2, To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. And then as he wrote to Titus also in Titus chapter 1 and in verse 4, it says, to Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Oh, friends, we need not only the grace and the peace of God, but as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we need the mercy of God. We need to show the mercy of God in the lives of others. So here he challenges him with that threefold connotation of grace, mercy, and peace. Friends, let me ask you today, have you experienced firsthand the grace, the mercy, and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ? You see, it's interesting in those phrases that peace always comes last because you cannot know peace until you first of all know the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. God in grace today, friends, offers to you what you don't deserve forgiveness, eternal life. God in his mercy withholds from you what you do deserve. That is the judgment of God and hell. But the question is, have you experienced his grace and his mercy that brings his peace? Has there been a time in your life that you've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone for your soul's salvation? If not, behold, now is the accepted time 
now is the day of salvation. I encourage you today to turn to God and experience the grace and the peace and the mercy that only he can give. Have a great day.